on Sunday. Uh, Kaminsky, um, the decision to have him inactive, uh, the punter he brought in to the practice squad and the receiver you had to try out with yesterday. Well, the first one, you know, every you got to make tough decisions every Sunday about who's up, who's down. A lot of it has to do with the game plan, you know, some of the things we, we need to do, and a lot of it has to do with special teams, and you combine that. You try to make the best decision uh, for the team. You know, uh, you want to have hard decisions with those inactive spots. I feel like we, you know, we do. Um, obviously, we value what John does for this team, but at the time we felt, you know, we put TQ up. And that was a decision we thought best fit the game plan. But those are week-to-week -week decisions, uh, D-led. There's no scholarships. It's not like all of a sudden you're active. You're going to be active all year. So that, that, those are week-to-week -week decisions. Um, and I believe the second question was the punter. Make sure I get your order right. Um, just like last week with the line, you know, we're going to always – and it kind of le bleeds into the third question you ask. We're always going to see what's out there, if any way we can help this team. Roster-wise, emergency list. Uh, I think that's, you know, doing our job as a football staff. Um, so Dustin's, you know, here, he's on the practice squad, and, you know, we'll make a decision in the week, no different than we did last, last week with the offensive line. And those are always going to be uh, things we look at week to week. Michael. What happened to your seat? I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I all you all, D-Led's -Led, intern. <laughs> he punched you. I, don't know. It's, it's brutal. I mean, I mean week to week, week to week. I yeah. I guess I got some <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to go back actually to the practice squad thing for a second. Mm -hmm. Are you using it differently than in years past because there are those six extra spots where it's offensive line, sure. classic, or punter, where it's almost like an elongated tryout versus, you know, meeting the first round spots for yeah. development? That's a good question. But good. You know, you know it's, you know, it'd be interesting to, you know, we'll look back and this, that stuff is a, I like that, the strategy part of the job. Um, because it allows you to be flexible. And in every team, you know, they have different issues, and it allows you to address certain things or protect yourself. Or another thing you talk about uh, player safety, the way I look at it too, is, you know, in the past, when you first, when the rosters were so small, you get a couple weeks in and the guy's banged up, he may not go fully on, on Wednesday, he may be, you know, limited. And then you're starting to shift guys. You got D linemen playing O linemen, you got receivers playing corners, and you may not get the best look. And it, but I like the, the extra practice squad spots. It allows you to develop. It does allow you to protect yourself in certain areas, and you can use it how you see fit. And I think it's one of the better things the league has done in the last couple of years. Um, so certainly, yeah, Michael, there's a lot of strategy involved, and I'm sure every team has their own way, but it's kind of how we've used it. And uh, Russell Gage, what's the discussion? Yeah, so I'm not trying to uh, be vague here. We'll know more by the end of the week. Uh, those things are tricky. Uh, sometimes when you, when, you, when you get to those kind of uh, injuries, um, so, you know, he'll be very limited to say the, to the lead, but, but, but there's always a chance. So we'll know more Friday. Steve. A um, couple questions on, on, on quarter rail. Uh, as we're still getting used to seeing a number 84, kicking yeah. the ball out of the backfield, but uh, how do you identify him as a, as a player? As a, uh, running back? Yeah, no, I, I mean, obviously he's in the running back uh, room and, uh, Des has done a really good job uh, getting those guys prepared. Des is a fantastic coach, and, and, and it allows – with all of our staff, you know, that's – the versatility um, pays off because he's in the running back room, but he can play multiple spots for us. And I really like how his role is developing. We'll see where it goes. It's kind of how, you know, there's an evolution of the season. Yeah, certainly, obviously, we see 84 back there. I think Ty Montgomery used that right. He was one in 88 back there. But now it's like with the number changes – there's a lot of things that are evolving in the in the game, you know, really how you ID guys. Um, but very pleased with with CP. Uh, we'll see where his role how it evolves. Matt, have you discovered anything? You obviously knew he was versatile mm -hmm. when he came here, but, but have you discovered anything uh, additional to that uh, at, now that you've actually seen him? Yeah, he's well, a couple of things. I mean, some of them are obvious, but you know, until you get to know somebody and work with them, um, yeah, really, really like the way he works. Um, the way he's prepared since he's been here, I think he's really bought into that role. And hopefully we can continue to grow and it's productive for us. And ultimately, we, we helps us win games, which we got to do. Awesome. What is just kind of the, the mindset of the team right now, kind of in the two games here, and how important is it to break out? Of it? Yeah, I mean, look, you got to get you got to get your first win. I mean, that's stating the obvious, right? And, uh, you know, it's such a long, I mean, think about it, we got 15 games left. 
And we said this before, it's not, it hasn't started the way that you anticipate. Nobody anticipates going out there. And everybody, I know everybody's optimistic. You try to be realistic, but we can, you know, we are, it is what it is. And your mindset's got to be, we, we got to go get a win. And you don't want to sit here Monday and keep talking about the team. Hey, you know, this, you know, we're close, this and that. I mean, we, we, we need to break through. Uh, but there's a ton of football left. I mean, as you can see, the, the things that affect teams week to week, injuries, you know, teams that improve, that's ultimately what happens. The teams that improve, that are in it, that have a chance at the end, they're the ones that play in January. So a lot, lot of season, like I said, 15 games. So we got to get better. Hey, Dr. Terrell, how um, do you expect Oliver to move to that position where he is? Did you rule him out already? Yeah. You, you ruled him out? Protocol? He's not out yet. <laughs> not um, out. So, nah, you know, every, I, no, um, so it's like every position, no different than Russell. You, you got to have be able to adapt and you got to have contingency plans, and that's what we'll do. Yeah. How you, how you yeah. Well, a couple of ways. I mean, obviously, where you're at situationally on the field, uh, plenty of time. You know, you, you, you know what you're carrying, short yardage. Uh, there's a couple other things, and just give you the mindset of it. I mean, you got to make those decisions with those playcocks, and you plan things out. And now you're backed up, and there's plenty of time left. There are certain things. Maybe you, maybe I was a little risk averse because of the situation, and it ended up not mattering because of what it, uh, transpired, anyways. And uh, whether you run or pass it, you know, we, we, we got to get our pads down and block better. You can't get blown up. But, you know, if you're going to be a team that wants to be physical, whether you are running or passing, we, we got we to gotta stand up in those situations. And that's nothing I haven't told the team or the line, and that's not an excuse because they're always looking for, hey, if something doesn't work, first place I start is myself. Hey, what could I have done better schematically? But we got to get in those situations. They stopped us twice on third and one and fourth and one. And we, to make a step, we got to make an improvement there, regardless of what's called. But yeah, there's certain things, and that's what's fun about this. And the difference is, logistically, when you're getting in there, you're backed up. What do you want to do? There's a couple of things that, hey, I may have called. Maybe I was a little risk averse because you don't want to maybe put the ball in the air, or, or maybe a certain ball handling you don't want to try back there because you've seen it go bad back there. And, and obviously, what happened happened. And so hindsight's 2020. And, uh, you know, you expect we got stuff, there was plenty of time. And, what happened with the punt, you still want to be able to rally and say, all right, we can at least make them kick a field goal. You know, we'll see what happens. Six points, you got all your three timeouts, or even down 10, you don't expect to, uh, you know, have two pick sixes either. So it's what happened, and yeah, it keeps you up at night. But well, we got to get better there, and myself included. Josh, when you were evaluating offensive linemen through the draft or to bring a guy mm -hmm. in, what are the non physical traits that you look for? Well, the minimal job requirement, you know, everybody's got their own scheme, um, and you got to be realistic, realistic what's out there at this time of year. But when you're looking at it, because we're trying to run, I mean, at the end of the day, can they, minimum job description, right? Can they block the guy in front of them and run or pass? And then it's like, all right, what traits? If you're going to be a wide zone team, are you looking for guys that have a little more hip flexibility, come a little more speed off the ball? If you're going to be a heavy gap team, getting into double teams and don't, maybe you go a little heavier, guy may be not as twitchy, but he's got a lot of damn uh, power at the point of attack. So it's kind of where you're at schematically. I think you've heard, I mean, one, you got to make sure bottom line job description. Can they at least block the guy in front of them on her pass? And then schematically, what are you doing? And that's why, um, again, it makes it fun. So you see some teams that go right at 300 pound guards, they run a lot of wide zone, quick action, kind of cut off the backside. You know, they're not going to be probably heavy drop back if you go that route. You got the teams with the heavier line, you'll see a little more gap schemes and maybe a little more drop back because they can anchor down in there. So that's kind of, and then you get to this part of the season. Um, you know, that's a, that's a skill that's developed, you know, line play. And I think that's something you got to invest in. Um, and so you got to, in this time, it's like, hey, what do you need and what are you willing to live with, you know? So. Charles? Coach, uh, it seems like you all were throwing the ball a little bit more on first down uh, this game uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Was that kind of like something that you had in mind, like to maybe kind of throw the defense off? Or, or what, what was kind of like the mindset? Uh, uh, several factors into it. Um, you obviously have your game plan, and then you got to be able to adapt. Uh, you know the, the matchup, what they what they were throwing out there against some of our personal packages. So what we threw out there, uh, that's what makes game planning and calling games fun. Is that kind of chess match? And obviously, it's about the players are the ones making it work. But when you're trying to set things up and the way that the game was flowing, felt pretty good about 
what, what was happening up front and, you know, kind of what they were playing in the back end and, and the way Matt was playing. So that's kind of how it evolved to that became becoming more effective for us. I can't give away the strategy. So, uh, but you just want to see it honestly. The things that help you is you hope to build confidence. Like I thought, Jalen took a step. Not perfect, but when you get a rookie guy, it says a lot about him because I've seen guys crumble. It doesn't go their way week one, and that's why I say the same thing with, with the punter. We got to make an objective decision in the week. But these are young guys, and I don't want to get them to all of a sudden they're just so you know risk adverse. Like you let Jalen play through it, and I thought he made it, made a step. Now we're going to see him take another step. So there's some positives. Uh, yeah, Coach, I'm trying to help out Anthony here. Uh, Penny? How is yeah. development? Get the reference? Yeah. Memphis guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is the development of TJ Green coming along as he's converting from corner? Yeah, so. Corner. The wide receiver, right? Yeah, so he's obviously an athlete. Uh, I went to Clemson out of Alabama, and uh, he's, a, he's a long athlete. Um, that's why he was probably a high draft pick to Indy. Uh, a few years ago in the second round, I believe. And, you know, he's he's found a role. And sometimes it, it, it happens with guys in, in different schemes and where he's developed or different levels, you know, lessons learned maybe for him. But been very pleased with TJ. Um, you know, he played safety the majority, and we thought maybe he could fill a void at corner, some of that necessity with injuries or whatnot schematically. And um, and then with, the, you know, the way, his, way he's built, should be able to help you on the fourth down as well. So... Pleased with TJ's progress. He's gotten better. I've uh, enjoyed coaching him. Hopefully close. Hopefully close. Him and Josh Andrews both. Yeah, and that goes back to your first question, right? And that, that's the cool thing about the strategy and kind of where we're at. Um, you can look at it. It brings in competition and also protects you. It could also help uh, Cam with his growth because Cam's a young player. It's not like he's punted a lot. Obviously, Dustin, how Dustin's my age. So, um, so and it, but he looks like he's in a lot better shape and he looks a lot younger. So it tells you what that happens when you coach or, or uh, maybe I need to pick my, my thing up. So um, get in better shape. But. But in all seriousness, he got a lot of experience, and we got to make the best decision going into uh, to New York this week, or I guess going into New Jersey. But yeah, I mean, it could be those decisions that'll happen Friday or Saturday. How, how many of these young offense that has a lot of question marks just with health in Ingram and Galladay and Saquon in the latter two just throwing it back? Does that make it difficult to really know exactly what they can look like? I mean, there's things like you know teams and. You know, they'll game plan things or maybe there's something they, they've seen that they want to attack or uh, they may be, you know, obviously their personnel shifts. And I, I know this. I know they'll be physical and they got good runners. Uh, Jones is, is a problem when he runs. Uh, that's why I said, you know, he, he is. I mean, he's been very productive in the zone read and when he escapes the pocket. Um, and so we got to be really disciplined. we got we got to take a step, you know, when you're playing mobile quarterbacks from week one, now you're in week three. We got to make a step. I mean, we you know we talked about it. We didn't affect the quarterback, and and Hertz made us pay, and we got to see if we can do it because Jones is a really good player, and he can hurt you with his legs. But I know this, Mike. They'll be ready to roll. I know Joe will have that team ready. They're, they're, they're a physical group. Yeah, actually, when you talked about Daniel Jones, I wanted to ask about that, but also on Saquon Barkley, it seems like they're ramping him back up. Does he still look like kind of that home run hitter capable guy? Uh, you know, it's not to me to make the prediction. I know he's a damn good player, and he can hurt you. Uh, you know, he gets going, he becomes productive. He can always rip off the home run. There's a few guys that can do that, and he's one of them. So, uh, you know, we've we got to contain him. So, like every week, there's challenges. That's life in the NFL, but he's a damn good player. And I'm Daniel Jones. I don't want to, you know, give him a game plan on this, but having faced a mobile quarterback in week one, how much can you draw from that experience? Different types of quarterbacks, but um, draw from that experience facing mobile quarterback now, what they want to do with Jones. Well, it's, it's can we be sound fundamentally? I mean, that's. You know, it's as simple as that. And there are a lot of simple things people say, like I always say in coaching, like nobody says the wrong things, but can you really implement them? And that's the challenge. And that's the same thing with the strategies week to week or whatever you call. Can you implement? Can you, can you execute? Um, easier said than done. So 
uh, he's going to be a challenge for us, and it'll be a good test for us and see if we've made progress. Uh, Anthony, one more. One more. Um, I mean, obviously, you talk about the Pirates, you talk about Cam. When you have a game where you changed two points last game, what do you tell him um, during that moment in the game and just going on that question? Well, that's what you got to say. Same thing with a, with in any sports. It's what's your philosophy. Guy drops a ball that you don't want it to happen. It's kind of like I call it kind of the – the, the movie critic, like I could go there and yell at him, like, don't shank it. It's not like he intentionally shanked it. We got to look down technically, you know, see where his mindset's at technique wise and, and, and let him, and that's the challenge of coaching. You got to, you got to be fair and let guys try to play through and see if they can improve. And if they don't, then you got to make, that's the tough part of the business and you got to make the tough decisions. But I don't believe all of a sudden something's catastrophic. We talk about growth and improvement around here. Again, easier said than done because you can feel, it could feel pretty crappy when you know, bad things happen and you, you need to take a perspective and say, hey, what's the big picture here? The same thing with the player. I had guys that gone through camp, they dropped a lot of balls, but there's something there. You see, you believe in it and you let them work through it and they either, uh, you know, swim or sink, you know, how you want to look at it. But same thing with Cam, gave the reference to, to Jalen last week, you know, I want to see him take another step and we'll see how this week goes for Cam. Right, appreciate you guys. Appreciate y'all. Thanks. Thanks.